Have you ever been surrounded by people who made fun of you? Have you ever been humiliated and ridiculed in front of a large group of people because they felt superior to you? Imagine living that feeling not for one day, not for two, but for years and years, if not your entire life. Discrimination is nothing to be surprised about. It is something that has been around since time immemorial. Things like racism, classism and xenophobia become chains and cages instead of attacks and hatred. Unfortunately, not everyone was able to experience this concept only, but there were those who had to experience it in the flesh. And I mean nothing more and nothing less than human zoos. A concept that, beyond the striking, becomes aberrant and deplorable. Before we explore these historical facts, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. At the end of the 19th century in Europe, what could be considered one of the worst crimes of the colonial era took place, as it is known that racism and abuse of human rights were commonplace on the part of the upper social classes, or white Europeans. But to go to the point of using their power to have people as the center of entertainment is definitely disgusting. And yes, as you just heard, these people who could be called upper class were using others for their entertainment. And I'm not talking about someone giving a monologue or playing an instrument, but people who were treated like animals. This so-called human zoo was a practice that served as entertainment for the people of that time. This activity was mainly performed in France, although it could be seen in other parts of the continent, such as Italy, Belgium, England, Sweden and Germany. As the name suggests, it was an exhibition of people from different native tribes, and in some cases, people with some kind of deformity, similar to what happened in circuses. People of different races and ethnicities, such as Asians, Africans, and even South Americans, were treated as wild and primitive beings. They were locked in cages and bars, fed raw meat, and their habitats were usually kept in precarious hygienic conditions, just to make them look more realistic in their areas of origin, which were also recreated, turning each place into a perfect representation of the stereotype. And if you think this is all, those who visited these places treated the prisoners as toys. They were not only allowed to look at them, but also to touch them, pet them, take pictures with them, and walk around their habitats. During these exhibitions, the captives often died, and instead of burying their bodies in local cemeteries, they were buried in cemeteries next to rapists and pedophiles. What is most shady about this is that it is not only colonial times, but also very recent cases. The last known human zoo to be closed was the Jardin d'Acclimatation in Paris, France in 1931. Although this story becomes even more shameful when you know its origins, chronological origins. Mexico has some influence on it because during the Mesoamerican post-classical period, from the year 900 to the year 1521, the Emperor Moctezuma Zocoyotzin, also called Moctezuma II, was the Huey Tlatoani, ruler of the Triple Alliance, of the Mexican city of Tenochtitlan. Moctezuma was a lover of animals and wildlife, so over time he began to have a collection of them, thus creating a zoo. The zoo housed a wide variety of animals such as pumas, jaguars, lynxes, bears, bison, golden eagles, hawks, parakeets, macaws, quetzals, pheasants, rattlesnakes, rays, sawfish, Japanese turtles, crocodiles and parrotfish. Undoubtedly the most remarkable were the humans. It is said that the people who lived in the zoo were brought there to keep them away from the ridicule of society as these people were considered freaks. Do you know what I'm talking about, do you not? They were hunchbacks, people without arms or legs, the kind of people who were called people forsaken by God in those days. Then, in this chronology, the first promoter of this type of show was Carl Hagenbeck, one of the fathers of modern zoos, who in 1874 introduced Samoans and Laps into his circus exhibits, presenting them as purely natural populations, along with their tents, harpoons and sleds. This German circus tamer made little distinction between bringing in wild animals like tigers or kidnapping exotic people like Eskimos. At that time, persecuted people from all over the world, mainly from colonized countries, were brought to the big European cities. Persuaded, these people signed unjust contracts that would make them live in cages in terrible living conditions. These attractions existed to entertain the white European public and exhibited black Africans 
Australian Aborigines and Eskimos. Human zoos were a Sunday entertainment option for a public thirsty for exoticism. Countries like Spain, France, Italy, England, Germany and Belgium exhibited these people because they were considered savages and inferior beings. Visitors threw food at them, commented on their physiognomy and compared blacks to primates. The cage of people brought from African countries was the most successful. Years later, the Brussels International Exposition of 1897 was held, motivated by King Leopold II of Belgium. He decided to move the colonial section of the exposition to the Palace of the Colonies in Tervuren. The halls housed stuffed animals, Congolese ethnographic and artistic objects, and geological exhibits. A sort of African village was set up in the exhibition gardens, where some 267 Congolese who had been forcibly expelled by the Belgians from the then Congo Free State were exhibited as an exotic attraction. It is worth mentioning that several of these Congolese died. Some fought to avoid being expelled from their land, and others died of diseases caused by the deplorable living conditions to which they were subjected. The exhibition was a success and inspired other places in France to follow suit. These exhibitions were often accompanied by lectures and demonstrations that reinforced the idea of the superiority of European civilization. In short, they were events designed to demonstrate superiority and justify European actions that were nothing but barbaric. The popularity of human zoos in France was linked to the country's colonial ambitions, which sought to establish its dominance over its colonies in Africa and Asia. One of the most prominent episodes was the Exposition Universelle in Paris in 1889, which featured groups of people from French colonies, such as Algerians, Tunisians and Canaks from New Caledonia. At the same exposition, the so-called Villages Negres were organized, where villages were reconstructed and Africans of different ethnic groups were presented, pretending to show how they lived in their places of origin. Human Zoo arrives in different countries, the creation of these exhibits was only the seed from which many branches of this concept would grow. We can call this the expansion of the human zoos in Europe. The great success of these zoos was due to several factors. First, the growing public curiosity about the outside world and the exoticization of non-European cultures contributed to the demand for such spectacles. People were fascinated by what they perceived as the unknown and the other. The organizers of these events often presented them in a sensationalist manner. The popularization of human zoos in Europe had a ripple effect in other parts of the world, spreading the practice to different regions. Let's put this in a little more context. In the United States, they also became popular in the 19th century, although they did not reach the same scale as in Europe. Similar exhibits were held at fairs and expositions, featuring American Indians and Africans. On the other hand, Germany was another European country where human zoos were common at fairs and exhibitions. The scientist Karl Hagenbeck, known for his exotic animal exhibits at Hagenbeck's Tier Park, also organized show villages with people of different ethnic backgrounds. The influence of human zoos reached the colonies of the European powers in Asia and Africa. In some colonies, local exhibits of indigenous people were organized often exploiting the indigenous population for the entertainment of the colonists. Imagine that it was not enough to take the natives by force, but also to go to their places to humiliate them. Fighting for human rights and equality. As the 20th century progressed, attitudes toward human rights, equality and cultural diversity began to change. Human zoos face growing opposition and criticism around the world. Human rights advocates and activists denounced the exploitation and degradation of the people exhibited in these spectacles. Moments such as the Otabenga case drew attention to a young Congolese boy who was exhibited at the Bronx Zoo in New York in 1906. This episode caused worldwide outrage and raised awareness of human zoos. Otabenga was displayed alongside primates, highlighting the dehumanization and degradation of humans in these exhibits. Advocating for the rights of captive humans has been a gradual process involving activists, organizations, legislators, and shifts in public opinion. From the earliest days of human zoos, individuals and groups denounced the exploitation and dehumanization of the people on display. As the practice spread around the world, abolitionist movements and human rights organizations emerged to take up the cause. 
As the practice spread around the world, it attracted the attention of the international community. Influential organizations and individuals, both inside and outside of France, denounced these practices to the global public. As awareness of the exploitation of these people grew, laws and regulations were introduced to prevent racial and ethnic discrimination. These laws made it more difficult to legally justify the existence of these exhibits. The colonies and colonized territories also played an important role in defending the rights of the exhibited. Local leaders pressured the colonial powers to put an end to these humiliating practices. Impact on the society of today. With the leaders and powers against this creation, it would eventually disappear, but the damage had already been done. It had already left scars on opinions and social influences, such as promoting the idea of racial superiority. These shows portrayed people from non-European cultures as inferior, primitive and barbaric compared to Western culture. By showing them in cages or simulated environments of their place of origin, the dehumanization and degradation of these people were promoted. This dehumanization made it easier to justify discrimination and inhumane treatment of them. Often, the people depicted were stereotyped and caricatured, leading to the creation and perpetuation of cultural and racial prejudices. These stereotypes have a lasting impact on the perception of different cultures and ethnicities. In addition to racism, human zoos also influenced classism. The display of people from non-Western cultures as curiosities or freaks created a dynamic in which some people were considered superior because of their ethnic and cultural backgrounds, while others were patronized and marginalized. This led to the creation of social divisions based on culture and race that are still present in various societies today. On the other hand, human zoos also influenced the education and science of the time. Many scientists and scholars were involved in the classification of the people exhibited in these shows. This led to the creation of pseudo-scientific theories supporting the superiority of certain races over others, which influenced education and research at the time. Their legacy has endured in collective memory and popular culture. The attitudes and prejudices perpetuated by these shows had a lasting impact on the way people of different cultures and ethnicities were perceived and treated. In short, by the 1930s and 1940s, human zoos had already lost much of their appeal and popularity. Western society was undergoing significant changes in its perceptions of equality, human rights, and racial discrimination. The atrocities committed during World War II, including the Holocaust, shed even more light on the extreme consequences of racial and ethnic intolerance. The last known human zoo was the Jardin d'Acclimatation de Nogent-sur-Marne in France, which closed in 1931. This closure was largely due to growing public opposition and changing attitudes toward the exploitation and dehumanization of humans in these shows. The last exhibition at the Jardin d'Acclimatation de Nogent-sur-Marne featured a group of Canucks from New Caledonia. Opposition and criticism, both in France and abroad, increased considerably. Activists, human rights organizations and political leaders began to push for the closure of this human zoo and an end to the practice altogether. The decline of the Nogent Saman acclimatization garden was symbolic of the broader decline of human zoos. As these spectacles closed, a greater awareness of human rights and equality gave way. World War II and its horrors led to deep reflection on discrimination and the international community began to address these issues on a global scale. The story of human zoos is a dark chapter in human history that forces us to reflect deeply on society's ability to degrade other human beings in the name of entertainment, exploitation and cultural supremacy. As we consider this grim legacy, several considerations emerge that need to be addressed and understood. First, human zoos remind us of the ease with which dehumanization can permeate society. The display of human beings as if they were caged animals illustrates how ideologies of racial and cultural superiority can lead to the treatment of other human beings as objects of curiosity. This should serve as a shocking reminder of how fragile the line between humanity and cruelty is. These spectacles also question the ethics of exploitation in the name of entertainment. In human zoos, 
people have been stripped of their dignity and freedom for the sake of profit and the amusement of spectators. This raises profound questions about the morality of using other human beings as a means to an end, no matter how exotic or different they may appear. The stereotypes and prejudices promoted in the human zoos had a lasting impact on how people of different cultures and ethnicities were perceived and treated in society. Although we have made significant progress in combating racial and ethnic discrimination, we still face challenges in overcoming these entrenched prejudices. What do you think about it? Did you know that this kind of zoo exists? In revisiting the harrowing chapter of France's human zoos, we are reminded of the importance of acknowledging and learning from our past, no matter how unsettling it may be. Such stories underscore the necessity of vigilance against prejudice and ignorance in all its forms. If you found this exploration eye-opening and believe in spreading awareness about these forgotten truths, please give this video a like, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel for more insights into history's lesser-known stories. Together, we can ensure that history's lessons are never forgotten.